Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera. Good morning uh, to all the new uh, intakes into the postgraduate program at UPM. I've been asked to talk about numerical ethics uh, as uh, introduction uh, to this uh, program. Now, the reason why I chose the word introduction to ethics uh, in clinical medicine uh, is in the 40 years that I've been involved in um, medical inquiries and to uh, complain against doctors I've noticed that uh, there were many instances when there was actually a lack of understanding of medical ethics as well as uh, maybe people have forgotten about medical ethics and also uh, uh, not adhering to the code of professional conduct is found in the uh, Good professional conduct of the medical council uh, that's specific to all doctors uh, when they register with the uh, medical council. Uh, let me begin to, uh, uh, very quickly to. Uh, Uh, medical ethics from the historical perspective of professionalism in medicine. Uh, the, <clears throat> med the present medical ethics uh, is uh, based actually on the code of the ethical conduct of the uh, ancient code of Hippocrates. Uh, uh, this was formulated by Hippocrates a few thousand years ago in the island of Kos in Greek. And uh, it's no longer used. Now we have our modern international code of ethics and also recently there is an introduction of the uh, Islamic code of medical ethics. Now we have to be very clear between the word etiquette and ethics. Uh, now etiquette is, I think it's uh, French uh, from origin and is actually, etiquette means a, a code of polite behavior or conduct in, in any society or among members of a particular profession. So in, in Bahasa, to be very clear, perilaku yang beradab serta bersopan santun di kalangan sekumpulan manusia di dalam satu badan atau profession. So, uh, so etiquette is quite different from ethics. It doesn't mean that uh, the uh, medical uh, uh, pro uh, professionals uh, need not have any etiquette in, in their practice. Ethics is concerned with the moral principles that govern a person's behavior or the conduct of an activity. It comes from the Greek uh, word ethikos means the science of moral. Now, <clears throat> with regard to medical ethics and etiquette, you know, as doctors, we will all have to abide by the code of professional conduct of the medical practitioners. Uh, this can vary from country to country, but we have our own code of professional conduct, which Professor Zaliha would be talking about later. Now, as far as a doctor is concerned, uh, the etiquette to be shown is that he must behave and look like a doctor, neat, clean and tidy, dress appropriately when dealing with patients, when in uh, the hospital, uh, in the, any health setting. It should be someone who soft-spoken, kind, considerate, and not arrogant. Uh, <clears throat> and he must be a good listener. Respect for all patients, irrespective of gender, race, color, status, and sexual orientation. This is very important in these days. And uh, for Muslims, uh, I think it's appropriate you know, to greet patients and Muslim patients uh, with assalamu alaikum and uh, begin the examination of the patient with bismillah. That would be much appreciated. So what is medical ethics then? Medical ethics is a civil code of behavior considered correct by members of the profession for the good of both the profession and the patient. So that's in, in, you know, uh, in short, about what is defined as medical ethics. And as I said, uh, the original code is uh, formulated by Hippocrates 
uh, and and the oath is taken by all graduating practitioners. The purpose of which at that time is to protect patients and practitioners. However, we no longer use them in the original version because uh, in the original version, uh, the names of the various gods of the old religions were mentioned. So uh, it's no longer used in, in, in that form now. Now, in uh, September 1948, uh, the General, the Second World General Assembly of World Medical Association in Geneva adopted the International Code of Medical Ethics, which, are, which uh, is being used right now, uh, but has been uh, what called amended uh, by the 32nd World Assembly in Australia in 1968 and in uh, at the 35th World Medical Assembly in Venice in Italy in October 1983. That's the International Code of, of Medical Ethics that's being adopted by the Malaysian Medical Council. <clears throat> so, uh, if you um, if you read this uh, the, the the book that's been given uh, to to all uh, uh, doctors who have registered the Medical Council, okay, uh, it's clearly stated the members of the medical profession are expected to abide by a code of ethics established by the profession itself. The purpose of the code is to safeguard the public, ensure propriety and professional practice, and to prevent abuse of the professional privileges. Now, uh, this code, uh, International Code of Medical Ethics, uh, was adopted, and then uh, uh, the Medical Council uh, adopted it uh, uh, on the 9th of December in 1986, and I was uh, actually uh, present when it was adopted. Now let's be, uh, we go through the declaration at Geneva, uh, uh, which is a, uh, which outlines the general principle of, of, of medical ethics, is uh, you solemnly pledged uh, to consecrate your life to the service of humanity. And that's a very big uh, declaration. And importantly, I will give to my teachers the respect and gratitude which is their due. And I will practice my profession with conscience and dignity. The next is the health of my patient will be my first consideration. I will respect the secrets which are confided in me even after the patient has died. And it's very important, remember that. I will maintain by all means in my power, the honor and the noble traditions of the medical profession and my colleagues will be my brothers, uh, which means also sisters, right? Yeah. Just that uh, the word brothers means uh, almost uh, generous. And this is another important aspect of the Declaration of Geneva. I will not permit consideration of religion, nationality, race, party politics, or social standing to intervene between my duty and my patient. I will maintain the utmost respect for human life from its beginning, even under threat. And I will not use my medical knowledge contrary to the laws of humanity. And to make this pledge, I make these promises solemnly, freely, and upon my honor. So, <clears throat> the uh, traditional emphasis of the 1960s uh, is related to the doctor's duties to the patients, which we call the Hippocratic tradition. Firstly, it's called non maleficence, it is a French word, do no harm. Whatever you do to your patient, do no harm. And if you have to do anything, you must do good, you must benefit the patient. So the word benefit source. And thirdly, it's very important to place your respect for teachers and your colleagues. Not only you must respect your teachers, your own colleagues. You've got to respect your own colleagues. And importantly, you have to respect your patient and their family and respect for life. And the important thing that is not to be forgotten is confidentiality. And an honorable personal behavior. So th these are, you know, the, 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 this, the, the, 
the seven points uh, that you have to remember uh, that about uh, you know in relation to the duties of the patient uh, of the doctor to the patient. But um, more recently, uh, the, the contemporary bioethical principle in medicine uh, in, uh, make it simpler to just four: uh, beneficence, non beneficence, do no harm, autonomy, and justice. Now, autonomy is a very important aspect because now patients will have to make decisions for themselves and they can have a choice whether to undertake certain treatment or not uh, uh, and, and, and not agreeing to you uh, to, to, to do certain treatment. They would like to have choices uh, and, uh, in the treatment and they would make the uh, decision uh, for themselves. So uh, that, that is why of the importance of the uh, informed consent nowadays, because we have to ensure that when a patient makes a decision to be treated by you, uh, to uh, undergo certain procedures, you know, it is their own free will and with full understanding of the, of the problems, the possible complications uh, and the possible uh, uh, outcomes. And fourthly is justice. Well, justice means justice for the patient. And also, but remember that justice not only meant for the your single patient, but in, it means to the community. There is such a thing as also distributive justice. These are meant for people who are in uh, in administrative situation when they agree, say, to introduce a particular uh, treatment. Uh, you must ensure that you know, in terms of uh, 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 distribution of a fund, uh, that will be justice so that you do not put all your fund into a particular form of uh, a type of treatment, or, uh, uh, and then you, you draw up all the money into to that particular treatment, and uh, you have very little money for uh, the other uh, uh, simple treatment. And this also meant for people, say, in the ministry, uh, when you, you know, uh, what you call distribute uh, uh, your, 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 your fund, the money, ensuring that, you know, there is this, uh, equal distribution as well as directing it into the priority areas uh, where money is required. <clears throat> now, I would like to <clears throat> introduce to you some aspect of uh, uh, medical ethics and from the Islamic perspective, and I come from the University of Islam, Islam Malaysia. Uh, uh, we have also to look into uh, the, <clears throat> the, uh, the Islamic perspective in medical ethics. Now, despite the fact that uh, um, medicine among the well, early physicians of Islam were very advanced, and they, unlike Hippocrates, there were no written or codified uh, uh, code of ethics uh, in the history of Islamic medicine or literature. <clears throat> it's because uh, uh, those physicians at that time, uh, you know, were very well versed in, in the Quran and Adiz. So, uh, and it is thought that it's not quite necessary because uh, all those values uh, are already present in the Quran and Hadith, but uh, but not every Muslim, uh, every Muslim I and mean, not many. Um, uh, I would say uh, 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 many Muslims are well well versed in the Quran and Hadith. So it was thought that you know it's about time that Muslim physicians uh, draw up kind of a code of medical ethics, and and they did it in 1977. Uh, by Islamic Medical Association in 1977, and then uh, they <coughs> uh, improved on it uh, in 1981. They, they, there's a quick document of Islamic Code of Medical Ethics, which was uh, formulated in the International Organization of Medicine in 1981. So uh, there is also some other Code of Medical Ethics, uh, but basically, uh, uh, the code of ethics as, uh, is uh, simply <clears throat> that 
and 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 Mr. God, uh, I would like to say that uh, the uh, graduate from our medical school, the uh, uh, passing examination uh, before they uh, register themselves uh, with the medical council, they are, they are made to to take this oath in, in front of the teachers. So is I swear by God, that Allah, the great, I would God, God in carrying out my profession to protect human life in all stages and under all circumstances, doing what also rescue it from death, malady, pain, and anxiety, and to keep people's dignity, cover their privacy, and lock up their secrets. So uh, <clears throat> the Islamic economic ethics uh, is basically, uh, you know, uh, uh, to say that you know you are an instrument of God's mercy, you extend your care to um, virtuous sinners, friend, enemy, near and far, yeah? and to strive in the pursuit of knowledge and harnessing it for the benefit, but not for the harm of mankind. And it's also stated here, uh, the same as with international code of medical, to revere my teacher, teach my junior, and be brother to members of the medical profession, join in piety and charity. Right? And uh, this is the important aspect of the personal behavior of, uh, uh, of doctors is to live my faith in private and in public and avoid whatever blemishes me. I am in the eyes of God, his apostle and my fellow faithful, and may God be witness of his oath. So oh, this is a very powerful oath uh, because in Islam, uh, we all uh, believe that uh, whatever you do, uh, uh, Allah will know and will see, will be all knowing. So, basically, whether you're dealing with the International Code of Medical Ethics or the Islamic Code of Medical Ethics, uh, it means that you take an oath to perform your duty selflessly with honor and dignity. That was very important, honor and dignity. We belong to an honorable profession and we should move around with dignity. We should respect for life at all stages, uh, meaning that uh, abortion uh, is forbidden, but under circumstances is allowed both in, uh, in the <clears throat> in Islamic uh, uh, code of ethics, uh, and the, the other thing is the same, respect for teachers, colleagues, and buyers, and patients' welfare must be uppermost and maintain confidentiality. So these are the fundamental principles of uh, medical ethics, right? So with that, uh, I would like to end uh, this uh, very short introduction to medical ethics. I hope you have been enlightened uh, with regards to the various code of ethics. And this code of ethics, as I said, is translated into our Malaysian uh, code of professional conduct. And uh, I would like you all to be very familiar with the uh, code of professional conduct. And for which I think uh, Professor Zaliha will, will, uh, will highlight or further with regards to uh, some of the issues uh, 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 of uh, non-compliance with the code of professional conduct. Uh, and also, yeah, may I also ensure that uh, you're very much aware about uh, some of your medical legal responsibilities because in case of medical negligence, not only can you be subjected to disciplinary inquiry by the medical council, but you also can be taken uh, to court and, 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 uh, and be sued uh, in the civil court. And uh, uh, also, don't forget that we are also subject to the other laws of the countries, the criminal laws. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, with, the, with the recent development in the UK, uh, doctors are grossly negligent, have even been uh, charged with manslaughter. So, as doctors, you must be very familiar uh, with the medical ethics and the good professional conduct and be aware of uh, the various things that can happen to, uh, if there is negligence in a professional sense, which I think the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, Dr. Hassan I think, will be talking about after uh, Professor Zaniha. With that, thank you very much.
Thank you so much, Dato. I think uh, you have enlightened not only the younger doctors, yeah, but certainly all the rest of us too, Dato. Uh, because I think uh, medicine is a lifelong uh, journey experience, right? That's lifelong learning. So I think it's always uh, very timely that we are reminded about our duties, right? Uh, sometimes we become so immersed that we may even forget or, or you know, worse, ignorant. So um, I'd like to invite our participants, our students, to please type in uh, if you have any questions under the Q&A section. But there is already a question here, Dato. Uh, it's from um, a colleague, uh, Professor Dayang. She says, Salam, Dato. Okay. Uh, in your 40 years of experience in medical inquiry, which is the most common cases or issues brought forward to the council? A uh, common issue actually is uh, in relation to uh, one is um, overcharging. Uh, secondly, doing uh, procedures uh, not supposed to be done. And uh, the other one is uh, when uh, gross neglect of professional responsibility amounting to uh, negligence. And of course, you know, you must remember as doctors, you, you, you have to ensure that you behave properly, uh, even uh, uh, in, uh, outside the hospitals, uh, your, your personal behavior is very important because any, any conviction in a court of law for, for anything, uh, uh, that uh, be construed as uh, 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 a, a behavior uh, and, uh, not in keeping uh, with the uh, uh, professional uh, uh, persons. Uh, uh, it is uh, something that you know can be can be uh, uh, charged in the medical council. Uh, so, of course, there is also issue of uh, breach of confidentiality, uh, and uh, also uh, improper uh, relationship with patients. Uh, that's not that. Uh, that, that was, uh, so many. <laughs> I, I can I, I can do, but uh, you can just go through to the code of professional conduct. Uh, uh, almost uh, everything that inside there uh, that be, uh, that come to us uh, for inquiry. Thank you, Dato. Uh, there is another question here. Um, uh, Dr. Asha uh, has asked, morning, Dato. Morning. At times of emergency, no next of kin available. We proceed with life-saving procedures. Um, maybe a comment here, Dato? Oh, yeah. The okay. uh, important thing is uh, to save life. So uh, if uh, what is the priority is to save life. And uh, uh, you just do that uh, without uh, a second thought. Uh, once you have resuscitated the patient, it depends on whether the patient needs an urgent surgery or surgery that can be delayed. If the surgery has got to be immediately done, to save a life, then uh, we can go ahead and, uh, and proceed uh, with the surgery, uh, having another, another person you know, uh, uh, picking up the, uh, signing up the consent because this is a matter of life saving situation. But uh, as far as consent is concerned, uh, uh, the, the usual informed consent is. Uh, only in situation where the patient is uh, conscious and of sound mind and is able to make a decision uh, on itself. But otherwise, uh, in an emergency situation, uh, you just do what is necessary to save the patient's life. Thank you, Doctor. There is another question. Um, what do you think, Doctor, with the anti vexers which are getting increased in number nowadays. Uh, they are not even anti-vaxxer, 
but also refuse almost all intervention which can be life-threatening. This question is in regard to the autonomy aspect in bioethical of principal medicine. Thank you. Or there is even autonomy, there, there is a limit. And if you are, uh, if you are, uh, become a danger to the public and that, that is that is the public has got the right to protect itself, isn't it? So uh, with regards to these uh, people who, who, who refuse to give vaccination to their children, find uh, other, under the present law, uh, there, is, uh, uh, there is no compulsion. You, you cannot take any legal action uh, against, uh, against them. But if doctors uh, who will refuse to give uh, vaccination, then I, I think that would be quite unethical to, under our present uh, ethical code. Because you're endangering the life of uh, another person. So I think that has uh, stressed a very important point. Even autonomy has its limits, right? Because you're talking about, first and foremost, we are here to save lives, isn't it, right? And uh, just respons responsibility, okay? Um, that took maybe one more question. Um, uh, when we talk about professionalism here, we talk a lot about uh, performing our duties with honor and dignity, as uh, Datuk has mentioned, right? Um, how do you learn to do this? Because uh, I, one would have thought that it is something to do with your own personal character. And one would assume that if you are of good character, then you would presumably be doing it with integrity and dignity. So how, how do you do it? I mean, um, can, can somebody uh, learn this and learn this to be good? Or is something that dates way back, even before you enter medical school days, maybe even when you are a school student? I mean, it goes way back. What, what are your thoughts about that, Dato? Behavior is all about upbringing. It starts from home and school. And of course, when you enter the medical profession, you, know, uh, you also have got to emulate the teachers. If the teachers behave badly, I think the trainees will also behave very badly. It's, it's how the teachers behave uh, in, 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 in the world when conducting uh, his work in the world. And uh, he has to demonstrate all these uh, uh, values uh, and if there is any infringement of all this, I think the person might be told, uh, of course, in the right manner, politely, that, uh, that, that, that we have to uh, abide by certain code of ethics as well as to have uh, uh, the etiquette of, of being a doctor. Uh, and uh, it is uh, something not acceptable that in, in a case that I've required to, uh, a doctor who is on on duty that day, has gone to the pub and, and came to the hospital to, uh, with the mouth smelling of alcohol, and then you know the patients complain that this, uh, that this doctor, even though he didn't uh, didn't appear to be drunk, but he smells of alcohol. That is totally unexpected. And if this, this particular doctor is go to the bar and involves in the brawl, I think that's totally uh, <laughs> you know unacceptable. So, but the more important thing is. Uh, how the, uh, how the doctor behaves depends on how the teachers behave and how the teachers are treating the trainers, the other staff, and how the patient, uh, how, the, uh, how the teachers uh, 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 take care of, of the patients uh, uh, that they're treating. Basically, it's learning by example, like they or leadership by example. So if you're Trainees behave, uh, you know, uh, badly. I think uh, should to look who the teacher is. Okay, thank you, Dato. Because I, I, I thank you for mentioning that. Because I think you not only lead by example, learning by example. Okay, so I just probably just sum up a few things that Dato has mentioned. I think um, thank you for sharing the Islamic uh, quote with regards to medical ethics. I, I found that very interesting. And I think when you talk about justice, we always hear about the principles, right? Justice. But I think we always tend to think about the patient. But that's what rightly mentioned here is the community, right? So I think we have to be mindful about that. And when we talk about the seven points that Dato highlighted about respect, 
it's not only to the patients and the family, but to the colleagues. So I think uh, we really need to be mindful of that too. So I think with that, uh, I thank Kadato on behalf of the uh, organizing committee, on behalf of the faculty. I certainly found that very, very enlightening. And perhaps I think there surely must be another platform to uh, deliberate on all these matters again. So Dato, thank you so much for being with us this morning. So um, yeah, thank you so much. Okay.